Welcome to the Coffee House Writers Group podcast number eight. This podcast is about critiquing how to critique, and as the big sell for Coffee House Writers Group is the critiquing we do in groups, this is a big part of what we're about. So don't skip this one. Here we go. Quite sure about the way I'm introducing these things now. I think like I'm making some sort of pause before I have a next stretched out sound, like Chandler Bing, you know, and Friends. I want those papers on my desk by nine o'clock. Uh, does uh, making a friend reference uh, make me dated now? Has it been that long? I don't know. I'm I'm starting to feel feel a little older, and not just because I did have a birthday this month or last month at the time you're listening to this. And having birthdays, having New Year's gets me thinking about getting the writing done, how long it's been I've been working on each individual thing. I've mentioned the sense of urgency in previous podcasts that I do think is good for writing and creation and living in general. So here's where I am now in my writing career, if you can call it that so far. I've been trying to plan out how to get into writing, how to become a name, how to make my words worth something. And one of the best ways to get your name valuable quickly is to win a writing contest. And when I look, there aren't really that many worth applying to, especially when it's costing you money. And for most of those they're just supplementing the work that they're already doing in like a magazine or something like that. And they're using the contest to essentially fund their magazine and their purpose out there generally isn't, I don't know if I'm being super pessimistic about that. It sounds like that as I'm saying it, but I've really thought this through and I've done other writing contests done several. I don't know why I'm saying other since I haven't mentioned the one that I've done the most and that's writers of the future which I've mentioned before on this podcast, that I have failed as of, well, not, I have not succeeded because I don't know if you really call it that much of a failure when thousands and thousands of other people also don't succeed, but I guess technically it is still failure. So having not won those, I thought another way to get my name out there quickly and valuable, it's really hard to do when you're starting with short stories. Or you're getting your name published out there for really nothing. So what's the next big thing? Well, it's what people generally look at when they don't know much about writing in the writing world. And that's publishing a book, a novel. And after you've won a writing contest or have gotten some name recognition, something to start with where not necessarily the general public knows your name, but... Someone who works at Simon & Schuster's, Collins, Harper, or The New Yorker knows your name, is you have something to follow it up with. And that thing that's usually going to make you the most and help you career-wise is a novel. So what I've been doing is trying to finish my novel. And while I'm getting that cleaned up and finishing it out to people... Go back to the short stories so maybe one of those can get out there just in time for where I actually have something to follow it up with, being the novel, which I would write first. And first is, is probably not the best thing to say about that either, since I've written a whole lot before it that's just not out there. They say that people have usually written many books before their first one gets published. And a lot of that's for writing practices, but, but who really knows? Maybe it's just for finding what works in the market. I mean, I'm learning more and more as it goes on what a writing contest likes story-wise, that it's going to be a different type of story for that specific audience, that it's not always the next thing that I'm excited about writing. And I am still excited about writing. I'm excited to write this next thing, this next thing, I have this list, it's on my wall, and it's like, I have this idea and this idea, and I want to get done with my current idea because my next idea is so exciting, and, and I, I feel that way no matter what I'm writing, when I'm excited about the thing that I'm writing, because it's 
there's always more and I'm coming up with more ideas than I can finish. And that's a good problem to have, but at the point where I'm reaching a, a certain stage in life, I want to just get on with it. On to the next stage in my life of what I see myself belonging right now, and who knows if that's where I eventually belong in my destiny of a compass. But I, I just want to get there. This uncertainty right now is just not a pleasant thing to have. And the only thing I can do to quell that is to just keep writing and finish it already. Which is really hard to do when I come home exhausted from a full-time job. And I want to do so many other things. I mean, I live in a city with so much to do. And I'm still technically young. I want to live my life while I can. My knee's breaking down, my back hurts, some inherited ailments to look forward to. So you just can't have it all, you've got to make priorities. And the part about getting done quicker is polishing it up quicker and developing your writing skill quicker. That it's not just to keep on writing. Yes, that's the best thing, that's the thing that you can do completely on your own. But having others' eyes on it may help expedite that process. And writing groups really, really help. And critiques are important. Giving critiques are important. Receiving them are important. And this podcast is going to be with John Lowell on how to give a good critique. I do not yet have something set up for how to receive a critique and how to use it, how to use it well, which I do want to have. And I have not decided who I want to be on the podcast for that. So... If you'd like to be on the podcast, and if you're confident on the subject, we can talk it out right here for an hour on the microphone. And this one you're about to listen to was pretty fun, since I I usually try to make 75% of the conversation my guest, especially since that's how I'm bringing them on. I'm bringing them on to talk about this topic and to bring up questions, bring up information from them, just keep pulling and pulling as much as I can to get all the good bits. And here I had a lot to contribute myself, because I consider myself a fairly decent critiquer. I've been doing this for long enough. So yeah, this one was fun. John and I, just we just kind of vibe. And we even stayed after just talking for almost the length of the full podcast, just after talk, just about... Really geeky writing stuff. I might even have them back to talk about fantasy, like on a fantasy podcast. Talking about the techniques, giving each other some specialized one-on-one -on -one insight into each other's works. So yeah, this was fun, and I hope you have a good time listening to this. It's not meant to just be informative, but also hopefully we're fun to listen to. So here you go. This is podcast number eight, Coffee House Writers Group. Please visit chwritersgroup.org. Find us on Facebook and Twitter, and this is the podcast available on YouTube, iTunes, and our website. Here we go. What had you decide to want to join a critique group? Um, well, uh, <laughs> that's a, it's, it's kind of a long story, but it's, it's, I imagine it's the same story everybody tells eventually, is I, I wrote a book. You know, and I, I edited it to like what I thought was an inch of its life. And then I, I went to a writer's conference and I found out I had not edited it to an inch of its life. <laughs> uh, and I, you know, I needed, I needed people to, to tell me what, you know, what they experienced when they, when they read the book. Uh, and, you know, you get friends and family to do it and they all love it because it's oh, their job. Of course, it's, it's you. It's, it's, it's their, it's their John. Well, well, yeah, and they and that's there's nothing mm -hmm. against that. I mean, but they they want to be encouraging, and that's mm -hmm. and that's great. And writers need that. Uh, but you cross a line where you need people to tell you the things that aren't working. <laughs> yeah, I know at critique groups, it's I really like to hear what works, so I know that I should keep that in later drafts. Mm -hmm. But I need to know what's wrong because those are obviously the things that I cannot see. Because I wouldn't write them down if they weren't working. Right. Well, and, and, and that's, 
you know, we all have a, the perfect image of the story in our heads when we're when we're writing it. Oh, of course, it's always better in our heads than what we could ever put down on the page. Just like it's all when we're reading a book, it's always better in our heads than what they put in movies. Mm -hmm. And and that's there's you know there's there's that level of of getting the words out from your head onto the page in a way that that makes it engaging for the reader. It's a difficult process. I mean, they they don't really ever teach you that anywhere. So then how did you find, you found Coffee House Writers Group through Meetup, I guess? Uh, so that is another one of those long stories. Um, we have an hour. No, I, I um, so I went, I went to, I went to a writer's conference. I went to the, the Central Coast Writers Conference in uh, San Luis Obispo. Okay. And came out of that, like, I have to find a critique group now. And so I went to Meetup. What made you come out of that thinking you needed to find a critique group? That was, um. It was, you know, I'd gone with, with the novel that was like, you know, as perfect as I could make it. And, and you know, and, and it's a conference, so there's a lot of different activities. I had an editor uh, gave, a, gave a class where they read the first page of, of, of everyone's novel. They went to like 50 of them. Uh, and they did mine first, uh, which is a little unnerving to have a professional, you know, read your first page and say, you know, what would I keep reading? Would I, you know, what doesn't work? For the most part of these conferences, they're, they're polite and they're, they're, they're nice to you, but they don't hold anything back either. Um, they're as brutal as they need to be. Yes, and they, in an encouraging way. <laughs> encouraging way. So you came out of there at least thinking, uh, I'm never going to be able to do this. I, I, I came out of, actually, I came out of there uh, that my first page uh, wasn't like panned. It was, I got, I got. Others some, were? Uh, there were, nobody was panned, but people were. You know, she would she'd read like a paragraph and say, "Okay, that's enough." Or she'd like the the mm -hmm. thrillers, like, "Okay, I can stop here because I know in three pages the, the car is going to hit hit it hit hit somebody on the road, and that's going to launch her murder investigation." Like she could, like cliche, she could nail the 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 plot. She'd ask the writer, "Is that what happens?" Yeah. <laughs> Confining uh -huh. a little bit too strongly to genre norms. Uh huh. And she she. She had good things to say about my writing. She called it poetic, but she, you know, she said lacking voice, which is a very common thing for early writers, you know, and, and I ended up being like one of the examples, like, okay, if I could take this person's and add it to this person, technical writing with this person's voice, then we, then we'd have a novel. Um, so I, I, so I, yours was the technical voice. I was, I was the technical one. I was, I was the, the writing properly. I had, you know, good words. I just, I didn't have the voice. Were they long words, technical words? Oh, this was, this was, uh, the, the first fantasy novel. This, this was, it, it's, it's kind of hard to, de to describe voice and I still don't have a complete handle on it, but the writing was good, but it didn't, you know, it didn't reach into the, the reader's, you know, soul and say, you must read me. That's I see. kind of a very bad definition of voice. <laughs> So I, I came out of that with like, hey, the writing, you know, I, I'm, I'm on the right track, but I need people to tell me what's working and what's not working. And I need it to be people who uh, aren't related to me or are impartial. Yes. So I, I went, I, you know, I, you know, I went on the Internet. How do I find a writing group? And uh, and that led me to meet up. And that met, led me to a writing group in Long Beach that uh, predated the Long Beach chapter. And that is an interesting story that we've we've shared together before. <laughs> Yeah, we'll 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 skim over that, I guess. Um, so then that group goes away. We get Coffee House Writers Group then. Right that that group that group uh, disbanded or stopped or went on pause, and they let their meetup expire. And uh, at that point, I was looking for another writing, you know, critique group, and uh, and you guys showed up magically. It was kind of awesome. Yes, and that was uh, myself as well. And Christine started it, and a few months later, I'm doing it now. I see you pretty much every week. Very happy to have you there. Oh yeah, no, it's great to have it. I love, I love the format. I love the people. Um, I love the way um, it, it's it's very encouraging. the The other group that I went to before um, had a lot of a lot of good uh, good criticisms. They weren't very encouraging, uh, and and then the format was such that like they only did five stories every two weeks. Uh, and they chose it by lottery, so there was always a chance that you'd it'd take a month to get a story, you know, to get half of a story read. Uh, and if you're pushing a novel through, that can be a long time. 
Yeah, and then people are going to forget what happened a couple of readings ago. Uh huh. And that's something you 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 kind of have to learn with critique groups is that um, if it's if it's kind of a public critique group where the membership changes a little bit, where there's fluctuation, you're never going to get a whole novel through a group with more than you know a handful of people reading. I think the one I I pushed through um, the Coffeehouse Writers, uh, I think you were the only person who heard every chapter. I heard. I think you I heard every day. chapter. I missed two readings in total. I was out for I forget what reason. Right. So that's something to know about critique groups is, you know, it's, it's going to be they're going to be great mm -hmm. for uh, the individual piece. Not quite as good for the piece as a, as a whole unless the membership stays the same. And I end up valuing different people for different reasons. When people are new and they haven't heard something before, if they like the piece that I read that stands on its own, I know that's got to be that's got to be a solid piece that it doesn't necessarily need the rest of it and that's how I know that this chapter is good like if you're watching Game of Thrones you know the whole piece is exemplary super fantastic ultimate episode by episode I also think is good but some episodes are better than others right so then that that's where the people if you're just jumping right in those are people who can tell you how they think of it individually I think that you should have every part be strong that keeps everybody keep going. Yeah, there, there's, and it's certainly true that on, on basically every level, you want to tell a story, you want a sentence to tell a story, you want a paragraph to tell a story, and you want a chapter to tell a, a whole story. You can, you can take, you know, a chapter in the middle of a book to a critique group. And, you know, even if they ha haven't heard it, they're going to be able to give you good advice. Exactly. And usually a little bit of background information helps. Yes, especially if you've got weird fantasy terms and you're building on something earlier. Yeah, some terminology. This is the dynamic of this character's relationship. Mm -hmm. So you see how it changes in this particular right. reading. Um, and that's and that's something you kind of have to you know experience and learn if you're going to try and take a novel through a group. Is is the what what advice is going to be really useful for you? What advice you have to take you know with a grain of salt? Um, you know, you get a lot of, a lot of people who are like, well, I don't quite know how these two people get along, but if they're supposed to hate each other, it works. And you're thinking like they're best friends. They're not supposed to hate each other. If somebody will give you who's jumping in, not as helpful or critique, if they're trying to say, well, I'm confused as this thing as a whole, when they're not looking at it the same with the eyes that they should be in that just this piece, just mm -hmm. think about it. Like if this were self-contained and don't worry about you don't know what this one word is written reference to or, mm -hmm. or if they're referencing a previous thing that happens that's like well yeah you don't know about it i'm not going to bring it up every single time they they do and, what and, happened and that's something you you kind of have to you struggle with as you know when you're putting a novel together because you got to remember your your reader might uh you know might be coming back to a chapter that they haven't you know, they might put the book aside for, you know, a, a few days. They might go on vacation. Um, so there's a level of reminding the reader about it also. So yeah. There's there's a lot Point. of juggling. Yeah. And then for getting the whole piece reviewed, it's hard to get an individual person outside of a critique group say, hey, read this, read this uh, 100,000 <laughs> word novel. And you, you're not going to find 15 people like you would in a critique group right in a, in a particular week yeah and it's kind of there there's you know and it, it's like you know wh when you're writing a story a novel you're going to have your own way of doing it and you kind of have to do that with the, the editing process but uh, a critique group is is one of the tools you get you know you get you know 10 15 people to say what they think about it uh, and then you edit it some more and eventually you hand it you hand it to you know some of your beta readers and it's been through the, the ringer already when you give it to them so they know I'm not wasting your time with this. This is this is I've 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 made this, you know, as good as I can make it. You've got the hard stuff out already, or at least you've scraped the layer of not workiness from the top yeah. of the cake. And and that's you know, it's it's not uncommon to go through, you know, seven or eight drafts of, of a novel before, you know, it's it's ready, you know, for for an agent to see it. Um you know, or, and then the agent will also tear it apart before they give it to a publisher. Right. You know, and, you know, there are some people who, who do 10 drafts. Um, you know, I, I think my first novel had eight drafts. Um, 
and I, and I think I had agents look at it. I don't think it, nobody nobody said, "Hey, I want I want to represent this." So it's even that's not ready yet. <laughs> I find for me that each iteration of this draft is less and less different from the previous one, and that's how I think it's like the second draft is going to be the most change that you probably ever have between drafts, unless there's something fundamentally wrong that you only discover after the fourth draft. Um, well, that's, it's kind of your, it's, it depends. Uh, and, and I'll go to my first novel. My, my first novel I did, I, you know, I, I wrote it. And then, you know, the second draft, I trimmed everything down, made it, made it all, all consistent, made sure, you know, everything I, I bring up later actually builds from the beginning. Uh, you know, I, I put it through another draft. I think I had a, um, a, a friend who was a copywriter uh, read through it. Uh, and then I, you know, I went to the conference and I found a critique group. And I also at the same time had read a few, few, few books on writing. Um, so I think my fourth draft is the most different for that one, because I, I ended up like rewriting the entire novel. Um, basically where the the first three drafts were an outline or this this is the plot this is how it happens but i'm going to rewrite the whole thing and that's see. what happened i see yeah for for me my novel that i'm reading in the group right now uh wake wake it then nah, that's a different story uh the nice holes um that one is fundamentally changed because i uh removed a character uh -huh. I removed a character and divided that character up into different characters. Oh, really? That were already existing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you took a character and you and you basically split up her role, both role and personality, and gave it to and to... sparsed it up in, into different characters that okay. were already existing and that's, kind of filled them out. That's that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's it was all... it was pain. It's painful, but uh, it had to be done for the sake of the novel. That's. When you when you start making decisions that are painful, that's probably you're on the right track. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes I'll go through what film editors and directors talk about. They'll have to remove sometimes their favorite part of the movie mm -hmm. just for the sake of the movie to be stronger. Uh huh. Which sounds contradictory when you say it like that, but if it's getting in the way of the fundamentals of the movie, that's what matters the most. Oh yeah, and that it's and coherent and things like that. And when you're when you're creating, you know, when you're writing the book, when you're creating the movie, your your favorite part is going to be different from from the reader, from the from the viewer, because you're in the process, and, and you're like, oh, I love this part because you know the way I I, I use the language and, and all the you know and I you know the 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 description of the of the violets and the daffodils, oh, it's just it's just perfect. <laughs> You know, and meanwhile, this is this is you know a gritty fantasy novel with you know blood and gore, and the reader you know might not like that, might not care, uh, and you know you might think it brings the whole thing together, and they think I'm why what happened here? <laughs> yeah, and it also for photographs. Sometimes I'll take a photograph and I'll really love it for really emotional reasons to mm -hmm. me. Yeah, but to share it with other people, their favorite photograph, it's coming in with none of those preconceptions. None of none of those attachments. Mm -hmm. So theirs is going to be completely different from mine. Yeah, and, and yeah, theirs is a just completely. All all they end up with is looking at the photograph itself. They don't have the trip up the mountain. They don't have you know the the time you know when you got stuck in, in the mud and and how hard it was to get that photo. All they get is the photo, and it's <laughs> it's the same with the book. All they're going to get is the words on the page when it's done. Exactly what it's worth on its own. I. Very recently uploaded a select grouping of photos I took from my trip to Japan. And what's getting likes are on Facebook are not the photos that I thought there would be. Uh -huh. so, so it's it's just fine that uh, I, I don't know. We go through this all the time. And last, just Wednesday, just a few days ago, the passage that I read to the group, I even said before I started reading it, I don't. I don't feel strong about this one. I don't feel great about this one. And then some people said that it was their favorite reading yet. <laughs> so I was like, I, I, I don't know. And then some ones that I love end up getting panned a little bit more. Well, I, I, I actually did that with the story I just put through. Yeah. The whole story was built on this, on this ending I had in my head of, of this guy who in a computer world, who ends up hacking the computer world and messing himself up. 
and the whole, uh, you know, and, and people are called ones and zeros, you know, ones, ones are team players, zeros, you know, go against the grain. And, you know, throughout the story, and, and you've heard the story, he's, he's, he's saying, you know, don't, you know, don't be a zero, don't be a zero. And he he messes himself up, and I wanted to end the story with him saying, "I don't want to be a zero." Great line. And I did, and I I read it. It actually went through this the earlier critique group at the point at that point the story was less developed, and everybody was confused all the way through. The ending didn't work, and I rewrote it, and I edited it, and I came you know I came back to it and brought it through this group, and the ending still did not work. I had to, if I wanted the story to work, I had to go with a different ending and you could sometimes move that to a different part of the novel maybe a chapter ending instead which this wouldn't be a chapter story but in in general just for the purpose of the podcast i guess well and it kind of goes into what you get in a critique um because you're going to get a lot of different opinions and if you hear one person say oh, oh i didn't like this but everybody else did that's okay because you're you're never you know you're never going to write a story that everybody loves yeah not everybody loves war and peace harry potter huckleberry finn you right know. i mean there's there's no story ever written that everybody loves so if you get one person to say i didn't like that but everybody else likes it you can say you know i can live with that but if you get you know eight of ten people that say it didn't work for me there's probably you gotta listen to that there's probably something wrong with it something that you can improve now you re and early in in critiquing I just like, I couldn't see it. Now, now when I, I bring it to the group and I read it to the group afterwards, I'll even feel like I'm hearing it through their ears or through their eyes, whichever for the first time. And I'll perceive it differently, even though I've read this, read what I wrote 10 times already. Mm -hmm. And just for the fact that I'm conveying it through a different medium or I'm thinking about somebody else hearing or listening to it, I'll think of it differently. Well, and it also uh, one of the reasons that that we do the the reading out loud is because it it is it is different reading a story out loud, uh, and it's important to to do that eventually in in your editing process. You find oh, this rhymes. <laughs> I didn't even notice that this really shouldn't rhyme right there. Oh man, and I now I have to divert uh, divert into a story from my college days if you don't mind. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, I went to the University of Colorado Boulder. And my very first class, I was an English major, English literature, and it was something understanding prose. It was the beginning prose class for, for English majors. And the guy who was teaching it, um, I kid you not, was like, I could not write a more stereotypical burnt out hippie <laughs> if I tried. He, he was, you know, he was in like his, I think, 50s or 60s at the time, a, a stringy hair, and he did, he had to have done a lot of drugs because <laughs> he would like start a sentence and then list off a few moments later, he would continue the sentence <laughs> every time it was, I mean, like getting a thought out of him was, it, it was a chore, you know, you're taking notes and one, you wouldn't have to use a lot of paper because he only had a few thoughts. So it it was it was a really not a good class in any way, uh, except he ended up giving me the the best writing advice in all of my English you know English career at college. Um, and I'm gonna speed up the words because it took him like five <laughs> minutes to say it. Um, but it was um, if a sentence doesn't sound right, it's not right, and that's it. That that's that's when you're when you're reading a novel you're actually doing the audio in your head. You're reading, you're, you're doing what it sounds like. And I think when, when they teach you speed reading, that they get rid of that. But most people read it how it sounds. And that's what we need as writers is we need to know how it sounds. And you don't get that until you read it out loud. Especially for the dialogue. Yes. Because sometimes you'll get people who are writing could not and would not when couldn't and shouldn't and all the contractions sound more natural and more suited to this character for another character sure especially right. if english is their second language mm -hmm. or or if you want to you know you want to have a very formal person versus you know versus a sure a a, a slouch or something you, you play with that but you don't really get what it sounds like until you read it out loud um if you want to go a step further have somebody else read it out loud 
because they don't know what what you know inflection to put on the words at critique i love having you there for when i read my stories there's a core core group of people that yes they're here they're here i really want to get their critiques and i'm not going to name everyone but i would say that you are one of them whose critiques i look forward to they're generally the most constructive and allow me to take the most and work with it. You give me stuff that I can use. And that to me is the most helpful critique because of just saying, oh, this is boring or this doesn't work. It's, you know, it's, it's information, but I don't necessarily know how to use it. Mm. You give me stuff to use. So how do you apo- approach critiquing? Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to hear. So I, um, Part of my, you know, I went to the writing conference and I came back. I want to go to a critique group. I actually bought a book at the conference about how to critique or, you know, how to, it's, it's uh, brought it here so that I remembered the title, which actually is not what I'm doing. I'm reading the title. <laughs> uh, it's the writing and critique group survival guide guide by Becky Levine. A very nice lady uh, who I met in San Luis Obispo. And I, first thing I did is I, I read a book about it. Um, Cause that's how I learn. It was so many. It was so many years ago. I couldn't tell you everything the book says. It, you clearly took away a message from it. The 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 messages I took from it are are basically you want to give people useful advice. The first rule actually that that she lays out is you want to be encouraging. Okay, so you always want to try and sandwich your advice with the things you liked about the piece. Just like a baseball coach for little league. Yes, because you know writing is is tough work and. People come to it at every at different levels, and we get people in the critique group who've, you know, hey, I wrote the first chapter of this novel, I quit my job over, and I want to hear what it it sounds like, and it's you know, and and they read it, and they, it's it's like it's the first chapter they've ever written, which is not a bad thing, but it's it's they've got some improving to do. Yeah, you gotta you gotta start somewhere, but where you start is not the finish line. Right, and the average published writer, you know, writes four books. Uh, before they find publication. Uh, and, you know, from my journey, that doesn't seem unrealistic. I've written two. Uh, I'm getting better. I've still got a lot of things I need to tackle, like writing. I really have a hard time establishing the emotional connection to my characters. So y- you kind of have to see where these people are coming from, and they're coming from different places. So you always want to sandwich your advice with, this is what I liked about the piece. And no matter how not well written it is, uh, there's always going to be good things, um, so so start with that, end with that, and then in the middle you're gonna. You, I want to try and give good advice. Sometimes it's the technical aspects. You know, the sentence construction is not as you know as optimal. It's I'm getting confused in the words, and that's a lot of a lot of first time writers. You know, overwrite, and then a lot of times it's a lot of people in our group will bring the pages, so I'll mark them up, and if if I've marked them up, I want to talk about the story and let them read the markups later. Right. Uh, and it's, and the story stuff is, is, you know, you try, you try to listen to it. Like, you know, this is a book I found on, on, you know, in, in the, in the library or the bookstore. And what am I thinking here? You know, the fact that I've, I've, you know, I've written a book or two, like, you know, like, okay, this, this, there's good stuff in this chapter, but this isn't the place for it is, is a lot of the advice I give a lot of times. I think you've heard that from me. I think I've given it, you know, to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's a common common thing writers do and that's another one of those easy things to fix i'll just put that stuff in later when i'm approaching critiquing i'll tend to look at it from the broad spectrum and then narrow in i'll think how big of a broad critique do i need to give because if i think that something is fundamentally wrong with this chapter or that this chapter shouldn't even exist which sometimes is the case Mm -hmm then that's the critique as opposed to you use the wrong kind of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and for the most part, the, the little editing stuff, I, I, I try not to, I try not to fixate on that because those are, those are things people can fix, you know, easily. And anybody can find those. And, you know, I've been, you know, I've been writing, I don't know how many years, my entire life I've been writing and I still type the wrong there. <laughs> And and it's not like I don't know. It just it's I'm typing and it comes out. So the, I mean we don't you know I don't think any any of us are really fixating on that. 
I, I'm exaggerating to make the point. Uh, yeah, yeah, he is. He is. Um, and he and he gives great critiques because because you do and and you. When he says he, he's talking, he's talking about me talking to you, podcasters, exactly. <laughs> podcast listeners. Uh, no, Jay, uh, Jay, he does. He's got that very broad look, and he and he narrows, and it's 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 fantastic hearing because because you cover the whole thing, and then you and then you cover pieces, and 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 I love I love getting your 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 writing back because you mark mark good places, bad places. Fast hand is very helpful. Uh, nobody else does this, but all my explanation points next to parts that I really like, just like bam, wow, and then. Uh, the triangle, which is the sign for delta, and delta is the word in Greek for change, which I learned from math. So that was our shorthand in math. So I do that in writing too. Uh, I, I I was too much in the math and sciences. I can't get can't get away from it all that much. No, that's not that's not a problem. That's, yeah. That's... So I'll I'll mark that change, and sometimes I was like, just in case they don't know, I'll just I'll just write as a key as a key a key on the critique. And I I have I have one piece of shorthand. I have I have a couple pieces of shorthand, but mostly the I have one that I just use for J's, and it's it's I, I write down robot doctor. Yes, and that comes from my story that I read to the group Our Silicon Souls, which the narrator is a robot. So. While that voice works very well for that story, it does. It's fantastic. I will sometimes, without a thought, bring that voice into another story or use it too technical a word. Yeah, it, it's, it's. I like to be very specific with. I. I mean, because to be honest, I think like a robot doctor. I. I have a very. I'm. You know, I'm leading a critique group. I write, but I'm very scientific, brain sighted. Oh yeah. And, even my approach at writing, my approach at writing is fairly, fairly uh, scientific, fairly regimented like that, organized, uh, which is not to say it's not creative, it's just my approach. So I'll think, what is the exact word that I mean? And sometimes the exact word that I mean or think is not always what is the best read. Well, and, and that's, uh, that's kind of everyone's journey is, is figuring out, first of all, how they write. Um, it took me a decade to figure out how I write a novel, uh, at least a decade, and if not more. I read books on how to write a novel, and they always, you know, and they give you this outline, and they tell you where to put everything, and that did not work for me. So it's, you know, it's figuring out how how you write is is part of the journey of being a writer, is figuring out the the methods that work for you. And all of us are there agonizing over the exact perfect word, you know. Most of the time, some of the time, in places, you know, and I and I love like when I pick a spot and I and I pick pick the exact word and nobody says anything about it or or I get kudos is even better. But when when nobody catches it or or says anything, I know I, I, I I'm I'm on the right track. When I get kudos, then then I'm I'm happy. But it's hard uh, figuring out the right word. Yeah, it's it's hard sometimes not to want to use the bigger word, mm -hmm. not just for ego reasons, but because that word fits it better i mean that's why there are separate words that mean the same thing yes there's there's the reason why affirmative exists while we have yes mm -hmm. um it uh, means the same thing but it's not used in the same way no and and yeah. and you know one of the things you'll learn is that you know if, if one person says affirmative and the other one says you know i captain that you right away you get you get a you get differences of characters uh and those are those are things you'll pick up in your writing journey including a critique group, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to tell you stuff like that. Especially in prose, the non-dialogue part, the text portion, if you will. If you use a word like that, some critiques that I've only heard since joining Coffee Ross Writers Group is that a shorter, simpler word is better than a longer, complicated word, which is the exact opposite of what I've been doing this whole time. Well, I, well um, a lot of that is actually how, how people are taught to write in, in school. Uh, and, and they teach you to write in school. And they, first of all, they always, they always, this is how many pages you have to write. Oh yeah. Which, which is, <laughs> is, is a killer if you're writing fiction, because if you're trying to fill pages in school, you're learning to write longer. You're learning how to stretch out an idea. Yeah. And in, in essays, especially I would like, I need to fill out three more pages of crap. In mm -hmm. order to fill this up, because I have nothing else useful to say. I've already said everything I want to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and once once you get into that writer mindset, you know you you get the classic Mark Twain who says who apologize. He you know I apologize for for so long 
a letter. I didn't have time to write a shorter one. <laughs> because, you know, concise is, it's usually stronger. Uh, I don't want to say always, because it's writing. There's no, there's no always in writing. Right. Um, I tend to fall on the, um, Ernest Hemingway, if you get a chance uh, to read him, is is fantastic. Uh, he's he's writing. Um, I think he's writing in the modern era, if I recall my English literature correctly. Where in the modern era, they they experimented with stories that didn't exactly follow cause and effect. So don't necessarily follow that part because now we're back into cause and effect, and we and we love cause and effect now nowadays. So don't take that that aspect of it. Um, There's a lot of things not to take from really old novels. They're a different audience. But uh, Ernest Hemingway was he he wrote clean. Uh, he he wrote clean, and and it was like when you're reading one of his novels, it's like someone's telling you a story across a fireplace, you know, a, a campfire, and and you just get sucked into it. Uh, and he, there's there's no flowery language. There's there's like maybe two adverbs in the whole thing. It's 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 fantastic and clean, uh, and you don't have to write that way. Uh, but I, you know, I tend to, to fall on that side of the spectrum. Exactly. The I put in way too many adverbs before I read the first five pages. Okay. Yeah. And then that's Noah it, Lukeman. It pointed exactly. It pointed out to me. I said, you know, do now do the exercise. Does this make it stronger? I'm like, oh my god, Bing. Uh huh. <laughs> So, uh, so ever since I've been doing a lot more of that and going back to the old pieces and fixing that up, but you know, a lot of the th other things that he said are common problems. I didn't struggle with as much, especially world building. Mm -hmm. I don't struggle with that at all. And, and world building, it's a tough thing. It's a really tough thing to do. Um, the, that's one of the things you can get. So there's all kinds of writing tools, uh, out there, um, you know, there's a lot of advice, you know, there's a lot of good message boards on the internet. There's, there's a lot of agent blogs and writer blogs that you can follow. There's a lot of books on writing. Um, one of the nice things about a critique group is people will share that this, you know, this book worked for me. Uh, you know, and I, I Noah Lukin's first five pages, I, I tell, you know, just about everybody because that, you know, that helped me out a lot. A lot of people recommend Save the Cat. Save the Cat. I love that book. <laughs> And I still love one of the stories in our critique group. Someone killed a dog in the first chapter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and what did you say? You said something after that about Save the Cat. Was it you? Or somebody did. It was probably me because I'm always bringing up Save the Cat. And, and I I think she's since edited that out of the first chapter. It's still in the book, uh, but I loved it because right away you know <laughs> this is not a character I can root for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was perfect. Uh, it was so perfect. They killed the dog in the first chapter. It was it was awesome. <laughs> you know, in, in that writerly way where bad things are awesome. Right. Yeah. In the heart, house of cards kind of way. Yes. Yes. Uh, I kind of, you know, I'm, writers can be sadistic and sorry about that. <laughs> yes. Cause, well, because we, we're always trying to find ways to, to make our characters' lives worse. <laughs> So that ultimately, when their lives get better, it's it's a bigger journey. I haven't gotten quite as good at that as George R. R. Martin, but uh, I'm getting there. Oh, you've got a long way to go, George R. R. Martin. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh my! I definitely prefer that to everybody's alive at the end and everybody's lives are perfect at the end and nothing changed. Yeah, and and it's you know figuring out. One, you know, who's your audience? What kind of novel are you writing? What kind of story are you writing? Um, so, you know, if, if you're writing, you know, a children's novel, you're probably not going to kill off everyone. Um, I would be frightened to see George R. R. Martin's children's novel, <laughs> but intrigued. So if you're listening, then... He's not really... stopping at Mufasa. Huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, wow, that would be interesting. Now I want him to do it. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's that's that's the other old writing thing, you know. You know, put your character up in a tree and throw rocks at them. So back to back to critiquing. Yes. Uh, so you've you've got you've got the piece in front of you. Say someone's printed it out. You're you're looking through the whole thing. Something when you say that this doesn't this isn't working for you, or use more of this. Mm -hmm. You say it with such conviction that I definitely like believe you, and I want to follow you. Do this what, more. What bring? What? Uh, what? What do you think helps bring? Because I I do feel like it's genuine, and you're not just 
con man, con manning me. So what what uh, what do you think from your background are you are you taking that helps you deliver that the way that I'm believing it? I you know I wish I could tell you. I part of it is that I I know how hard it is to write the perfect sentence, and uh, you're always you know we're always trying to get you know that perfect thought of you know, in the middle of a paragraph a sentence that people are going to gloss over when they read it in a book, and you want it to be perfect, uh, and it takes forever. You know, and you, you try it a million different ways. And when somebody delivers, you know, a, a great or a perfect sentence, you know, I, I want them to know because that's that's hard work. That really is. You know, everyone says they've got a novel in them. But, you know, the people who, who sit down and put one out and then put another one out and then, you know, and, and keep trying to make that that one novel great is is that's that's admirable in, 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 in my life. You know, I hope it is because that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so let's look at another approach of critiquing being the Simon Cowell. Mm -hmm. which we've called Eric, Eric the, Christine has called Eric, Eric the, the Simon Cowell okay. group a lot. Yeah. Sometimes I've approached something as being the Simon Cowell because if you're, if you remember, do you, do you watch American Idol? It's been a long time since I've So, re, so remember when somebody got a positive critique from him, uh -huh. it would mean that much more because they know that he's hard to please. Yeah. So they know that they've definitely got it right. Mm -hmm. So I try to, have some sort of middle ground, not be quite as harsh as him, but I don't want to praise everything and I don't want to bash everything. Right. Well, and you want to, you want to encourage people, but you want to give them your honest opinion. You want to, and you know, and, and we can, you know, we're really harsh to ourselves so we can be harsh to other people. Uh, and I know online I've told people to burn sentences before <laughs> and then like bury the ashes and then burn <laughs> Salt them the earth. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I also have a mean streak. Yeah, I, um, sometimes I, when I feel that strongly that this is not working that much, I'll really try to drive that home. And it may be hard, but it's coming from a place of good meaning, of well-being, of I care about you as an author, and that's why I'm critiquing this this harshly is because I really believe in what I'm saying. Uh, well, it, and it, that's why it's important, one, to sandwich – you know the the, mm -hmm. the critical information with 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 the things I liked. This is not just true in writing, but in a lot of things. Uh, yes, and and it's it's important to say you know this this the this didn't really work for me. Please understand that my passion is the fact that the other stuff you know is is working or is, you want it to work. Yeah, it's, it's it's not just you suck as a writer. It's I see your potential and I want this to be better than mm -hmm. it is right now. And and it tends to be that. When when you've got something that that riles you up, like oh this isn't working, it tends to be that the that there are a lot of parts of the piece that are working, and there's a lot of potential there, and you see it, so that you you kind of want to get that out, and you know it's, it's I, I I'm not I'm not bashing you as a person, I you know I, I you know and absolutely, and of course you know you you, you could be wrong, I mean absolutely yeah you know mm -hmm. you might be one of the guys that wasn't going to read the book anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important as as the person receiving the critique to to know that you know we don't have any special powers. Um, we're <laughs> we're just we're just you know listening to your story and telling you what we think. And we're also while all writers are readers, not all readers are writers, and they're looking for different things. Uh, well, and kind of you've you've kind of pegged something in my brain. Um, a lot of people come to the critique group and they'll sit in the corner and they'll they'll listen. And when it comes to their turn to offer criticism, they'll say, "Oh, I, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. I don't, I don't know what to say." Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here is very commonly said. And and one that's perfectly okay. You can come to the everybody's welcome, and you can pass. And we've had people who who pass every time, and they they can keep coming. We love to have them. But the the idea that they they don't know what they're doing is 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 completely wrong because they, if you're in the critique group, you're you've read books before. And if you've, 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 you have a passion for it. Yeah. It's, it's something that's interesting to you. So even if all you're going to say is that it seemed funny to me or what, you know, everything you bring to the table is going to help the, the, the writer because the writer is going to know this little part didn't work for, for you or, or, you know, Hey, I, I loved it. Except why was his hair blue? <laughs> you know, it it's, you're you're bringing you're bringing your 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 passion for reading you're bringing your basically your good taste and that's what most writers have is good taste in things they've read 
Um, so even if you've never critiqued a story, your opinion is going to be useful for the, for the writer. You know, even if it's just like a tally of, you know, hey, eight people really love the piece and wouldn't change anything and two people would change different parts. That tells me I'm on the right track. You know, that this is a pretty solid chapter. If, you know, if all 10 people or 15 are telling me that different things need to change, I, you know, I, I don't know what to change, but I know there's something seriously wrong with the chapter. Um, yeah. And I wish I could remember the, the famous guy who said it, but if, if people, if everybody's telling you something's wrong, they're probably right. But when they tell you what to fix, don't listen to them. Okay. You're going to, you're going to have to solve it on your own and your solution is going to be better and fit your novel better. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's painful, but, uh, it's gotta be done. So you've continued to go to conferences and things like that after having gone through I do. a whole novel of uh, reading to Coffee House Writers Group, which thank you, that was awesome. You're um, welcome. What do you can? What do you bring from that that you don't necessarily get from critique groups? What's or what's different about it? I guess. Um. So I I have a, a few conferences I go I go to regularly, and I'm I got my eye out for other ones. A good writers conference, first of all, is gonna is gonna be um, an encouraging place. Uh, it's and it's gonna be a place where you meet a ton of other writers. All of us who are there are pretty much going through the journey, you know, a similar journey, you know, maybe with a different path and we're on different places, but you meet people who are, you know, they're, they're writing too. They're, you know, so they, there's one, there's, there's kind of an instant camaraderie uh, with almost everybody you meet there. That's good. There's, I've not been to a writer's conference yet, but definitely will I've just, I don't think I'm going in with the right ammunition until I've finished finish what I'm writing right now. Uh, well, it, and it depends on, on what you want to get out of it. Uh, because the, uh, okay. So the, the, um, Southern California writers conference is the one I attend most frequently. Uh, they have, they have one in San Diego in springtime or late winter, depending on how you define that it's California. So, you know, it's, it's <laughs> either slightly, slightly cooler than regular or slightly warmer than regular, but in the fall, they have one in, uh, in Newport beach. Uh, that I'm thinking about going to, I'm not sure, but they have, so they, so they have, you, you've got the people you meet there, you know, and you've got connections you can make if you're the kind of person who makes connections. I'm not. <laughs> so, you know, I don't have a lot of connections. Um, it, it's difficult unless you're Christine and you're super bubbly and everybody likes you. Oh, she is awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I am not super bubbly and I'm, I'm a shy person. So I, you know, I kind of sit in the corner, but they, they have workshops. And they have workshops that address the the writing process at just about every level, from from getting started to you know to pitching it to to agents and editors and to to promoting it. So they have workshops that are that are useful. Although I think it's it's I, I've been to enough now that it's that it's more of like it's it's more of a challenge to find the the more useful ones in general. But usually they there's always like a piece of one that that I'll pick up. Uh, and some of them are, are strange. Like the last one I went to had a workshop on, it was very specific. It was crime fiction. It was for, for people writing crime fiction or, or touching on crime, on crime. They were talking about the process by which, uh, police in, in the country locally, nationally, uh, run over undercover operations. Like there was a whole workshop on that. Just to help inform you if you happen to be writing that kind of thing. Right. So there's almost always something that you can take out of it. For you, if, yeah. Even if you've, you've, you know, you've been to four or five conferences and you've taken all, all of the regular classes, there's, there's always something interesting. They also have the one, the one I go to often, uh, has uh, little pitch sessions where they have, they have, uh, what they call advanced critique sessions where you, you submit like the first 10 or 15 pages of your work to a, an author, an editor, or an agent. Uh, and if you, you know, if you submit it to an author or an editor, they're giving you advice on what to improve. Usually if you submit it to an agent, it's, it's a pitch. It's like, Hey, do you like this? And they tend to give you less advice, but at the end they, you know, they may say, Hey, send me, send me the novel or send me, you know, the first three chapters of the novel. Yeah. Agents are not your enemies. They're your friends. They're the ones who are, they're looking for writers. They're not there to just tell everybody no. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and they almost always, you know, a good conference will have several agents in attendance and they always do like an agent conference. Uh, and they're, they're always interesting because um, they tell you, you know, what they want, what they're looking for, how they're looking for it. And please never come to my office. 
Please never, ever come to my office. So I haven't been to a writer's conference, but I've been to conventions. I've been to Mm Comic-Con International, to Kamikaze and WonderCon. And they'll have things on writings in there. They'll have not workshops, but panels. Mm -hmm. And uh, while on the floor, there's some sort of camaraderie. Everybody's friends because, hey, we're all in the same thing. It's a safe zone Mm -hmm. to celebrate all of that. And, you know, we have stuff in common. In those panels, a lot of those, I feel like a lot of panelists are skeptical towards their audience. Okay. As as in, while while they're there, they understand that people want to learn from, but they also come in with the experience that says that 80% or more of this group will not follow through. Mm-hmm. Or that, you know, all of these people who want to break into comics or whatever they're trying to break into aren't putting in the work. That's, yeah, there, there's, there's, so do you get stuff like that from writers conferences? They, they have the same kind of, they have panels. Most of the ones I've been to, they're, they're, they're all very encouraging, but you, you kind of do know that, you know, most of the people in the room aren't going to make it, uh, but the, they'll let you know, Hey, you know, it's, it's, it's your job to make your, your work as good as you can make it. And then they'll bring, you know, and then they'll bring up somebody, you know, hey, she's been coming here uh, to this conference for, for 20 years. And now she's publishing, um, you know, her she's publishing a line of, of cozy mysteries. So you see you you see success stories, too. And, you know, and nobody nobody knows who's going to make it and who, who isn't. Uh, the only thing we can do is, you know, keep, you know, writing better. Yeah. And, and then you know, hope that somewhere around along the way you you think you understand, hey, I'm not kidding myself. So that you don't give up. Yeah, and and eventually, you know, if you know, if if you're if you're if you've got a little bit of talent, and you don't need a lot of talent, you just need a little bit of talent, and you're willing to do the work, eventually, you know, you're going to get published. It's you know, it's it's your drive, it's it's your you know the the work you put into it, it's gonna it's gonna pay off. You know, I can't promise you're going to be a bestseller. I can't you know I can't promise a lot of things. That reminds me of something I've told a lot of people at group, but I'm not sure I've ever told on the podcast before. Which is at one of these panels, the one that actually convinced me to move to L.A. was at Comic-Con. He said that there are three things that you, two of three things that you need. Talent, Mm -hmm. persistence, and luck. If you have two of those three things, you don't need the third one. You'll make, you'll make it. So if you have, if you're persistent and you're lucky, you don't need talent. If you're talented and persistent, you don't need luck. Somebody raises their hand and says, well, how do you get lucky? And he says, half laughing, move to L.A. <laughs> Bam, here I am. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, that's uh, – no, that's uh, – Malcolm Caldwell wrote a book on, on success, and that was pretty much the, the sum of it. You know, you, you need talent. You need you need to do the work, and you need a little bit oh, of Oh, it's luck. absolutely the best to have all three. You can never depend on getting luck, even though I'm here. I suppose I've gotten a little bit lucky by meeting a coffee house writers group. Well, yeah. Th- but and- you, have to, you have to do stuff. You don't just sit in your home. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you 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 know, luck is something you can you can to some extent make happen. You know, for for small amounts of luck. Uh, you know, you you're, you know, you big luck. Uh, you know, I don't know how to make that happen. Oh, I'll, I'll get back to you. <laughs> we'll we'll do another podcast. How to get lucky? Wait, that's <laughs> probably not the best title. Uh, so then uh do do you have a critique do you have critiques still at these conferences um yes still getting critiques so i I, how are those different than the ones you're getting from coffee house writers group on a week-to-week basis those those tend to be so um the people you you send your advanced critique to at this you know and every conference is different so they they may have this they may not have it uh the one in uh san luis obispo the central coast writers conference had had it had something similar they um they're usually professionals you know when you've been doing when you've when you've seen a lot of stories there's a lot of things you pick up as a professional um so you know when they offer you know their opinion on a piece you you know i i give it a little more weight you know they're not necessarily right uh and i went to one conference i sent the same chapter to two people to two one of them was an editor and the other was an author editor and they told me contradictory things about my story Oh, that's that's nice. You, you know, I, I, you know, and I, I you know, and I, I, I actually like recorded them and, and asked them directly about the thing they they contradict each other. And one of them was like, you know, that's fine. That's that's a writer decision. That's that's fine. It didn't. I I noticed it, but it didn't bother me. And the other one says, yeah, you can't do that. That's not right. So they they give you they you know you get you know professional criticism, which 
generally is going to be, I'm going to say harsher, uh, depending on, you know, what level you're writing at. Um, they're not there to coddle you. No, no. And, and, you know, and you're, you're, in a lot of cases you pay extra for, for these critiques and, you know, you're not. You need to get the most out of them as you can. Yeah. And then on the other hand, you know, when, when you get a kudo from them, it's, it's, it's kind of nice. Yes. It's getting the kudo from the summer cow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And they, you know, they see things that, that most people, you know, won't see like your, you know, your average reader is going to see a few things and you go to critique group and you're going to get different levels of, of, of readers who are going to see different things. Like I'm a better. Which is why everybody's helpful. Right. And, you know, you put, you know, 10 or 15 of them in a room and you get a whole lot of opinion, you know, and it tends to be really, really useful. The single person critique is also useful, but in a different way. Uh, and profession, uh, especially if it's a professional, they're going to, they're going to see it from their professional eye, you know, where like a lot of readers will be like, I'm okay, you know, with the slow end, slow beginning. And the professional's like, no, 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 you need to start, you need to skip these first, you know, eight pages and start on page nine where it gets interesting because I want to be interested right away. Uh, and they're going to, and they're telling you not, not because, you know, Hey, you know, I don't mind, you know, I hate a slow story. They're going to tell you that because that's what sells is, you know, the story that starts on page one. Uh, and of course all, all my stories start on page 10, which is problematic. Yes. And I've, I've definitely taken to that advice and have things starting right away. Uh, however, you also need a lot of exposition right away. Cause also the, the, starting in the what's going on isn't going to make sense yeah and, and that's that's the the challenge is 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 to start us right away in a place where we understand what's going on without stopping to tell us why we understand it to to, to drop us into the world in such a way that we know yeah. exactly yeah where only we are. only be economical about the information that we're being given mm -hmm. or we're giving so that it's not full of the page and when we need to know something they'll tell us or we'll tell them and when we unless we're one of those people that's super hung up on terms that that are that are interesting it's like well you get you get it by context just like when you're reading a word you don't know you kind of get it by context and mm -hmm. you you look it up or you don't and you move on yeah and, and you know that's a lot of advice we give to to people who are bringing their their first piece into into the writer's group is, is you've got this information. It's very important to know it. And the reader is going to need to know a lot of this, I, I hope, by the end of the novel. But here's here's all I need to get going. And it's nice to hear someone say, I understand the conflict of the story without this little piece about, you know, Absolutely. where the aliens originally came from. I'll get that later. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to know about their their history and evolution right. or whatever, how we got here with this dystopian government mm -hmm. and and that's that's a very common thing that that first writers do first time writers um and you could get away with it back in the day um you know there's a lot of people who are famously published uh like i don't know i don't think anybody would publish moby dick today <laughs> um i think you know tolkien would have a hard time getting published <laughs> but they've got great stories you know and it's just writing and reading has evolved and um, people people still read them through because they go in with the word of mouth of hey we've read this thing all the way through and you just have to keep going but if you're especially a new author you don't have that benefit uh-huh you don't you so you have to hook people you have to hook everybody's a new reader you don't have old readers that are going to help boost you up and make other people read until page 15 when things get interesting yeah and and it's it's important when you've got that word of mouth you've you've got You've, you've got some trust. Uh, and that's one of the things that, that I kind of tell people when they bring in their chapter one is the first thing you have to do as, as an author is make me trust you. I'm going to invest my time to reading, you know, your book. I, I got to know that you're, you, I'm in capable hands. And you do that with, with that phenomenal opening sentence or paragraph that just drops me in, into the world. And, and I just, I'm just in the world. I don't have to worry that I'm going to slip out of the world. Um, and that, you know, it takes a lot of practice. I tend to have like 800 versions of my opening paragraph or opening sentence. Uh, and I'll work on that, you know, a lot. You know, the, the opening paragraph of uh, A Favorite Son, which I, I brought to the group, I have no idea how many iterations that went through. But it, it changed a lot based on, you know, feedback I'd gotten from people who critiqued it. And, and it started out... Um, 
I don't even remember how it started out, but but the the thing that I got from critiquers is that I I shifted my point of view from the first paragraph to the second. And I started technically in the point of view of the graveyard. And I hadn't realized it when I wrote it. So it was one of those things where somebody pointed out and I, you know, rather than stepping back away from that, I doubled down and I went full into the graveyard. We're going to we're going to do the opening paragraph from this from the point of view of the dirt. Uh and it worked. Uh, but I, I never would have noticed that if somebody hadn't pointed it out. It was just, you know, the first version was like, I have to get something on, on the paper. Uh, so this is where we're going to start. And for more on first paragraph, people should listen to podcast number four, which is already out uh, with a- Andrew Turner. Very nice. And bef- before we wrap things up, let's just talk about if there's something in particular that we're looking for when we first receive a piece and we're going to critique it. Do you look for one thing more than other? Um, because different people are looking for different things. And we like to think that we're looking for everything at once, but do you just know it when you see it or do you, th- or do you like have a, maybe a mental checklist? Um, well, for, first thing is a lot of people will, you know, will ask them, you know, Hey, what are you looking for? Particularly if there's, it's their first time here. Uh, and a lot of people say, Oh, just anything, you know, anything you notice. Mm-hmm. Um, and if that's the case, then uh, what I'm, the first thing I'm, I'm, I'm looking for is, is do I know what I'm listening to? Uh, and we we had we had a story go through the group um, last week, where the the writing was was it was good writing, but the the author hadn't put a lot of effort into into grounding us in the reality of his story yet. So he had this perfect picture in his head of what was going on and where people were, uh, but it, it was kind of like he was teasing the reader about where they were. It was like I'm going to give you this tiny little bit of information, and you're going to be wondering, am I in the regular world? Am I in this fantasy world? Uh, and there's probably a way to do that <laughs> that works and is phenomenal. Uh, but for me, it was it was figuring out when I was grounded and letting him know, hey, this is this is this is, you know, this is the problem I had with it. This is these are the parts that worked. You know, the writing was really good. I love the conflict. I love the setup of the conflict. And you started up. You got us to an inciting incident. Chapter one. That's f- fantastic. But I didn't really know where we were until like page five. So that was, that's, you know, one thing. And, you know, sometimes I'll know where I am right away, but the sentences will be confusing. So it kind of really depends on the piece, really. I mean, I, I go into it like not knowing what I'm going to gonna hear. And I kind of go through the things I need to know as a reader, I guess. Yeah. So when someone prints something out, I will go with my pen and I'll circle something so that I know this is where I notice that something was an issue and I'll come back to it later Mm -hmm. as it's going on. And if someone is just doing audible, I'll write down, this is a core piece of information that I need so that when I'm giving back to critique, I know where to reference from. Mm -hmm. And then when something is going on, I'll write this, this part was, this part was off. This part was um, like this, but that's just the, that's the procedure. When I'm looking things as a whole, I don't think I'm looking for anything in particular when it ha- when as it's happening, mm-hmm. but after the fact, I've realized some of the things I've keyed out more than other things have been contradictions mm-hmm. uh, and cliches. I I think I zap that out more more than anyone else at the, at the group. I I try to to kill them, bury them dead, and salt the earth. Nice, very nice. Uh, after that, I will tend to point out things that are overused. Mm-hmm. Then I'll go into character. You know, is this character likable? Should they be likable? Are they cliche? Are, you know, what is, what are these characters? What are the relationships to each other? And more than it, I try to hit everything, but more than anything else, I just notice in myself, that's what I'll tend to grab onto first. Mm -hmm. Aside from, you know, the technical aspect of switch these around or this should be a new paragraph, you know, things like that. And I tend to, um, one, if I've got the paper in front of me, uh, you've seen me. I I, I go through a lot of ink. Uh, I I'm a micro editor, so uh, you know all through the piece I'll, you'll have things like move this part here, cross this out, cross a lot of cross this out. I and it, it's you know it's one of the drawbacks with me. I don't always pick up the character information, or you know I usually don't, will only pick up two or three important things about the story overall. Hopefully they are uh, they're useful. The when I'm listening to a story. Um, if I've if I've been a good boy, I've brought some paper and I'm writing notes down as as I hear them. But I and I'm not 
you know, I don't have a specific checklist. It's, 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 you know, like I said, it's, it's the things that, that I notice, uh, as I notice them, um, there's, you know, and, and as a micro editor, you know, I, I, I pick up little bits of unnecessary sentences. Uh, overwriting is, is a very common problem. Uh, it's an easy problem to fix cause it's just crossing out the right words. Um, from you, one of the things that I'll end up looking for is the genre stuff. You know the genre stuff pretty well, especially because what I'm sharing right now is contemporary fantasy. Mm -hmm. And what I shared before with the robot, obviously science fiction, you know that pretty well. And you know what's different about it or does this work? Not bringing the, the, you know, you know what this is without me telling you because you know the genre, but is this good in the genre? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and there's there's a there's a lot of things like you know this is what this is what a reader will expect, and I I don't read a lot of romance, but like in in a romance novel, you have to introduce the two characters, you know, pretty pretty close to the very beginning of the novel, uh, and and those that actually is a very form, formulaic setup, so they almost have to like hate each other in chapter one. Uh, if they don't, you know, it's okay, but just make sure the rest of it is riveting and that you're not going to lose lose readers. Um, <laughs> No, it's it's there's a lot of a lot of genre stuff where if somebody is a regular reader of science fiction, they're going to get this right away. Um, if they're not, then, you know, you might need to explain more. Um, and I'm you know, I I wish I was more read, more well read. Um, I, I was I was I'm glad I went to, to college and studied uh, English literature because I they kind of forced me to be well read uh, and across a lot of genres. Um, it was difficult after college to find good books to read <laughs> um and then actually and then harry potter came along and i loved it when somebody eventually dragged me and made me read them uh because it, well and that's we've, kind of, we've referenced that book more than a few times on the podcast well and and that's uh, actually, that's i use it a lot when i'm i'm talking to writers about uh query letters which will be you know something that if you write a novel eventually you 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 might want to send it to an agent and have them represent you. You need a query letter, uh, and query letters are like however hard you think writing a novel is, query letter is going to be like twice as hard or eight times. But I reference Harry Potter a lot because when you tell me that when you break the first novels down, you know it's about a a, a boy who doesn't know he's a wizard who goes off to wizard school to learn how to be a wizard. With it, for me, it just it didn't sound interesting no matter how many times people described it. So, you know, you're going to have to figure out a way to describe your novel in a query letter eventually and know that, you know, one of the most well-loved novels of our lifetimes doesn't describe well. It's, you know, it's it's this guy who goes to school to be a wizard and there's dark wizards and, and it just comes off, when you try to describe it, it comes off very rambling. That's okay, but it's a, it's a challenge you're going to have to overcome at some point. You're going to have to figure out a way to distill your novel into, into like one or two sentences. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, any more advice for people looking for critique groups or how to give a critique? Um, for, for giving a critique, I, I'd say always just keep in mind that you, you've got somebody's dream. There's some, somebody's child in your hands. So you always want to look for the good stuff. Uh, and there's always good stuff. The, you know, so the the writing might need a lot of work, but there's there's always something good there. Uh, so always the idea, look for that. Maybe yeah. the idea. I and we've had people who 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 ha who have struggled with you know English as their second language who've brought in stuff that if I were trying to publish it, I would require a lot of work. But it's it's had some beautiful ideas, some and and even beautiful turns of phrases and beautiful you know things. So there's there's always good. So keep in, keep that in mind that you know there's always there's always good to see and and so you always encourage people don't hold back uh, on what you think could be could be changed if that's the kind of advice they're looking for for um, finding a critique group one if if you live in Southern California there's the Coffee House Writers Group um, and and I've I've been to you know two different critique groups and I I love this one I love the format a lot better than the one I went to previously but it's kind of you know you 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 find them online or you know or through word of mouth you can find them at, you can go to a writers conference and talk to people there where do you go uh, and you kind of have to go and see if you like them if if you there's a lot of specialized ones where if if you don't have people reading your genre it's it might not be worth it might not be worth it. 
uh, especially if you're writing very genre specific. If you're writing a military science fiction thriller and everyone there is, you know, writing, you know, uh, poet, poetic, you know, romance, li- literary or yeah. romance. Uh, if there's nobody there who's, who's familiar with your work, you should find it. You should probably find another group. It's, it's kind of, you know, you have to see if you fit and if, if you like it, if you like the process, it's, it's getting used to the fact that people are going to be looking at your work, uh, with, with a more critical eye than your, you've, you've heard from your family and your friends. Cause your family and your friends, they love you and they want you to succeed. So they're going to view your work through that lens. Now, we love you too and we want you to succeed. Um, we're more practical about it. Yeah, but we, we're, we're, on the, we're on the journey with you and we know it's, it's, not, all, you know, it's not all roses and daffodils. There's, there's work. There's, there's a lot of work. And uh, we're going to tell you where we think you know, your, your piece uh, needs the most work, I think. And where can people find you, John? Uh, me, uh, the, probably the easiest way to find me is, uh, at my, uh, very, uh, sparse, uh, author website, uh, which is, uh, johnlowellauthor.com, uh, J-O-H-N-W, or L-O-W-E-L-L author.com. If you go to johnlowell.com, you will find out that there is a guitarist, uh, (laughs) who I assume is awesome, but he had better, you know, keep his domain name active or I will steal it from him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay well thank you very much for coming and being here and dispensing uh what i think is a very valuable podcast oh thank you more than anything else i think this is uh core to what our group is about oh good i'm glad i could be of assistance <laughs> thank you for listening to this podcast uh go out there and critique some pieces join some writing groups if you're in one of the writing groups well hey we love to have you and we want to keep you So we have several more podcasts lined up, some well wrapped into our local writing community. We will have uh, Alana Saltz and Wellman, Sarah Thursday. Those podcasts are already recorded. They will come out uh, fairly soon. Check us on Twitter and Facebook. We will post those on Thursday. And if you haven't heard of them, you will soon, and you'll be happy that you did. Go forth and create. Create.